Let's paint some pumpkins with my new gouache paints. Hello, I'm Caroline and today I wanted to show you my painting. I bought some gouache paints from Arteza. So we're going to unbox them, have a little look inside, see what they're like, put them in my palettes and then give it a go of painting some pumpkins. I tried using it on some thinner paper just to try it out and it seemed to be pretty good even on thin cheap paper but I want to try it out on some proper decent paper so if I end up throwing a lot of water at it it'll cope nicely. So let's pop over to my desktop and have a look and see how I get on. So here are my 60 gouache colours from our teaser and you can see it says on the box 60 gouache colours premium. Mm, I didn't know they did a non-premium, so maybe they do, maybe they don't, but look at all those colours. I am really looking forward to trying this out. I've been quite excited, waiting for the delivery man to turn up with them. Right, let's have a look what colours are in the box. I bought myself two palettes because rather than use these just on an open palette, I want something I can close the lid on. So I decided to buy two palettes. I can't fit them all on, but I can fit most of the colours on. So let's have a look and see what it looks like putting these paints into the palette. I love looking at this, seeing all the colours and thinking, mmm, I can't wait to start painting. So here are the colours. They are gorgeous. If colours could be tasty, then these would be tasty. Which one's your favourite colour? Do you have one? Or do you generally love all colours? So these gouache, I did give a little try out last night to see if I could even vaguely use them to try to understand how they would work a little before I did this video. I only did a quick 20 minutes. And as you can see already, my palettes are rather grubby. Right, I've taped the paper to my backboard with some washi tape. As you can see, it's a very autumnal washi tape that goes really well with my pumpkin theme. So, foxes, trees in a sort of pumpkin spice colour. Now I'm going to give all the paints a little squirt with my squirty bottle. Just mist them a little bit because they're starting to dry on the tops and it makes it very difficult to start using the colour then without scrubbing away at it. If you just give it a little bit of a misting with some water, it just starts that process for you before you even need that colour. Right, let's start off with my big pumpkin. I think he should be orange. You can't have pumpkins unless you've got an orange pumpkin. So. I'm going to work from light to dark. Now, one of the beauties of gouache is you can work from dark to light, which is completely different to watercolour, which is what I'm more used to. But I can't get my head around it. So at the moment, I'm still working light to dark. I probably will change when I've had a lot more practice. But for now, let's stick light to dark and see how I get on. I've had to water this down a little because I found it was so clumpy, one, my brush was just thick with it, and two, it just wouldn't flow smoothly onto the paper. So by doing that, it's just made it so much easier to paint. Now I'm going to leave a little white line between these sections, and there's a reason for that. Well, there are two. One is, I'm a very clumsy person, and as I learn to draw more and as I paint more, I'm getting less clumsy, I'm getting more control, but... I'm still not there yet. So having something like this makes me really concentrate and then I can make sure that I'm improving all the time on the way I draw lines using a brush. I got free white that comes through from the paper underneath. So why use the gouache if I don't need to? And if I really go badly out of lines, I can top over the top of it with a little bit of white, but I won't use so much then. 
One thing I am really enjoying about this squash is that you can pick a colour you like and then add white to it and you get this beautiful shade of whatever colour. There's just something about it. I don't know what it is, whether it's the chalkiness or what, but I just love the pastel look about it. Right, this one can be a nice olive green, but pale olive green. Look at the colour on that. Isn't it gorgeous? I never thought I'd enjoy olive green as much as when you add white gouache to it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's such a therapeutic, relaxing thing to do. I'm really enjoying this. Right, this bottom pumpkin was going to be a lot lighter when I first started painting it. I just got a tiny bit of colour, a ton of white, mixed it together and look at that. It's buttery, isn't it? It's just something about that that I really like. Now this tall one I liked because I used cream gouache and gouache looks so much like cream it just suits it to be in a cream colour. So put some of the lines in, some of the contours, some of the shading and already it's looking absolutely gorgeous with those colours. I just love the colours of gouache. Did I say that? I'll probably say it again. A quick blast with the hairdryer there is one thing about gouache which is very confusing if you imagine they're like watercolours. Lights tend to dry darker and darks tend to dry lighter which isn't like watercolours at all because they all dry lighter. So I'm finding it a little difficult to get my shading right on these. Right it's time to put some background on this. I don't know what colour to do so I mix up this sort of brownie colour and I didn't like it. It's a very grim colour, isn't it? It's not happy, it's not vibrant, it's not even autumnal, it's just meh. So I decided to mix up a different brown. I like this brown, it's quite nice. But I've got this horrible blob in the corner up there. What am I going to do with that? I know, I'll wet it a little bit and I'll use dry brush to see if I can lift some of it to get it out of the way and bring it more to the colour of the gouache that I'm using. Put some of that on the top, see how we get on. It looks a bit like a shadow, but the light is supposed to be coming from that side. Hmm. Oh well, moving on. No good dwelling, and who knows, by the end, you may not even notice it. Now you may have noticed that there is some shading on these pumpkins that you didn't see me doing. And there's a good reason for that. I went to change my water, so I turned the recording off and then I forgot to turn it back on again. Carried on painting. Fortunately, I realised before I'd completely finished the drawing. So now we're adding a bit more shading on the other pumpkins. I love this blue one. Absolutely gorgeous colours. I think he's my favourite at the moment, but then that could change because every time I add more colour, my favourite pumpkin changes. Adding even darker colours really brings out the colour of these pumpkins again. I'm really loving this. Did I say really too many times? Now the observant amongst you may have noticed the very subtle mini Mouse plaster on my thumb. Well, I decided I needed to cut my lavender down now at the end of the season before the rain came. And I couldn't find my secateurs, so I thought, oh, I'll use the scissors. I'll be fine. I wasn't fine. I've got a huge blister on my thumb, so I've had to cover it with a mini Mouse plaster. Band-Aid, I think you call it in America, is that right? Now, I'm trying to get the right balance with these gouache because, as I said, light tends to dry dark, dark light, and I'm struggling a little. For me, this is feeling a little bit more like mixing a magic potion rather than mixing a colour of paint because it just doesn't do what I want it to do. It does its own thing. So I'm sure that little pumpkin is starting to look like a tangerine, or is it just me? <laughs> oh, well. Right, let's go for the knobbly bits at the top. Now, the sticking out long bit, I would say, is the stalk, but I don't know what you call the bit that's actually attached to the pumpkin. Is that the stalk too? We'll call it the stalk. The whole thing is now the stalk, whether it is or not, because I'm not sure. So I'm colouring these in different shades because I would have thought different shape and size and colour pumpkins will have different colour plants ever so slightly. So they dry ever so slightly different colours. That's my theory. I don't know whether it's right or not, but I like it anyway. I think it gives it more interest. If they were all the same colour, it could get a bit tedious, I think. Right, let's make a start on the leaves. 
I did look up a reference for these leaves, but I don't know, they don't look quite the same as the reference looked, but I think the reference had so many veins on the leaves, it was completely changing it. You could see the contours of the leaves just with that. I think maybe I should have used a more simple reference. By adding on a bit of colour and then a little bit of water around the edge of that colour, I think it's blending nicely to give the leaves a little more interest. But the leaf on the bottom left, I'm not quite sure how that happened. It doesn't even look like a leaf. Well, not a pumpkin leaf anyway. So we'll just colour it in quickly and move along. Please do not look at that leaf. <laughs> You'll keep seeing it all the time now, won't you? I think by adding some dark underneath where the stalk goes on the top one, that really separates it from the... See, we do need a name, don't we? The bit that goes around the pumpkin. So I like that. It's just a matter now trying to give them a little bit more interest. So I'm fiddling around. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, but I'm enjoying it. And at the end of the day, if we're enjoying our art, it doesn't really matter, does it? The most important thing is to have fun. And every time we do something, even if we get it disastrously wrong, it doesn't matter because we've now learned how not to do it. So anything you make with your art is always worth looking at and being proud of because you've either done a good job or you've learned an important lesson. Or several important lessons. I quite often learn several important lessons from my art. I'm trying to draw some veins on these leaves but my brush is just not going thin enough. I think it's a combination of it's an old brush and a bit tatty on the ends and the gouache is a little thick. I do have a thin brush but the bristles on that are bent and so you have to compensate for that and you end up well it's quite an interesting experience shall we say. But I think I'm going to have to crack and use my little brush. There, that's better. It's very awkward, but it's better. I am excited, though, because I've decided I've finally got to the point where using my old brushes really isn't helping me. I'm desperate for new brushes, so I've ordered myself some from Amazon. So when they come, I'll show you what they look like. One of them's a cat's tongue. Hmm. Apparently, that can do everything any brush in the world can do. We'll find out. Right, time to put a little bit of shadow under the pumpkins. I'm not quite sure if this is going to work. Now, is this a light brown that's going to dry darker or is it a dark brown that's going to dry lighter? I don't know what makes the difference. So let's put some brown on and see what happens. Put a little bit under the pumpkin as well. So it's actually sitting on the leaves. You can see the shadow on there. That's my theory anyway. Already I can see it's drying very light. I don't know if this is going to be dark enough for convincing shadows. While I'm waiting for that to dry, let's do a couple of stems and a couple of tendrils. Now, I did have problems with this. I tried to leave the gouache thick so that it would go over the colour underneath, but because it was so thick, it wasn't flowing off my brush. So it was very difficult to do. A few times I had to go over little tiny bits, but rather than stop mid twirly whirly bit, I got to the end and then I topped up the little bits that were missing, otherwise I was not going to get back in the flow of those spirally tendrils. Oh, they really make a difference. I love all these curly bits. Now I had a great idea then. The background was looking a bit boring, so I thought, I know, when I did the quick sketch last night, to make it a bit more exciting, I put some spots behind it. But it was a very small picture, so the spots were quite big and they didn't look too bad. This is a bigger picture and those spots look terrible. So I'm hoping they'll dull down because gouache can dry lighter. Fingers crossed. Spoiler, it didn't dry lighter. I kept going, thinking I'll put different colours on, that'll help. So eventually I decided, I don't think I can live with these dots. They have to go. So I thought, right. If gouache will lift with water, you have to be so careful not to lift your gouache when you're colouring one colour over another. I'll just go over with some water and then it'll get rid of all the dots and splodge them in. That may be true of most colours of gouache, but not the red that I used. That red did not want to lift at all. I scrubbed the paper to death. I think it's passable, but I'm certainly never doing a red dot on anything like that ever again. It's nice though because it's scrambled the background a little bit so it isn't a solid block of colour now which I think is nice but I really shouldn't have done those dots. 
Right, time for a little bit more shading on this pumpkin here. Hmm, I think he might be coming my favourite pumpkin again. I'm quite liking the shading. I am fickle. Right, after all that water on the back, I think I'm going to really need to darken the tendrils and the stems of these. I'll go over again. I'm going to add another tendril here as well, I think. Why not? These leaves just look a little flat, so I'm going to try adding some colour. It may work, it may not. At the moment, they're just sinking too much into the background, so I'm just fiddling around. Not quite sure what I'm doing, but I'm giving it a go and seeing what happens. If nothing else, it's therapeutic. I just love playing with these colours. Right, we need to darken those shadows. They really weren't dark enough. But is this going to be dark enough? Or are they going to dry lighter again? Mm, I'd rather take it in stages rather than have the shadows too dark. So we'll just go for adding this colour. It's definitely making a difference. They are standing from the background a lot more now. I quite like that. But what will they settle like when they're dried? Just do something to bring the pumpkins more forward. I'll try a little bit of white gouache for highlights and little bits of dark here and there and see if that does the job. Oh yes, I think that's definitely working. A little bit of tweaking here and there. Fortunately, with gouache, you can. Just add some water, squidge it about. We're done. A little signature. Time to take the washi tape off. I love taking the washi tape off. It's one of the best parts of making a painting. So there we go. One picture of pumpkins. Would I do anything different? Yes. I would not put those dots on. As it is, they blend it back far enough, I think, that I get away with it. So there you have my picture of a pumpkin with my new gouache paint. I hope you've enjoyed it. Which one was your favourite pumpkin? I change my mind every time I look. I'm still not sure. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. And that way you'll get to know whenever I put out any new content or go live. I'll see you all next time. But until then, don't forget, draw every day and have fun. Bye! a little outtake. I'll show you my problem. I wanted to show you all this against my green screen with my beautiful pumpkins and all you get is a see-through drawing wherever there's green. So that was a fail but I am holding it like this and I'm going to put a picture of my pumpkins over my really bad green screen picture of my pumpkins. See you next time!